Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation as part of the Industry Insight webinar series. The topic this time is mid-year check-in for law firms. Speaking today will be Joshua Lennon. Joshua is an attorney admitted to the New York Bar. He studied law at St. Louis University School of Law, obtaining a JD and a certificate in international and comparative law. During this time, Joshua clerked for the Missouri Attorney General, helping prosecute discrimination claims on behalf of Missouri citizens. He also studied European Union Law at the University of Georgia School of Law's Brussels Legal Seminar. When working for Thomson Reuters as publishing departments in both the United States and Canada, he helped legal practitioners improve their services. Joshua currently serves as lawyer in residence for Clio, providing legal scholarship and research skills to the leading cloud-based practice management platform headquartered in Vancouver, Canada. He's been a guest lecturer for movements like legal hacking and legal technology at schools like MIT, Suffolk Law, and Vanderbilt. He's also spoken before organizations like reInvent Law and the ABA Law Practice Futures Initiative. The presentation today will be followed by a Q&A. Please enter your questions into the question box in the webinar panel on the right side of your screen. All questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. We're recording this webinar and we'll be sending out a video and a follow-up email in a few days. We'll also post the video on our blog over at www.lawtechnologytoday.org. Thank you all for joining us. We'll now begin the webinar. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mid-Year Check-In for Law Firms. I am your host, Joshua Lennon. I, as uh, I've often said, I'm a lawyer in residence at Clio. Uh, and the one thing he didn't mention is I'm very active on Twitter. So feel free to reach out to me via Twitter at, at Joshua Lennon. And I'm happy to connect with you both there and on LinkedIn or even just via email if you have any questions about the material presented today. What I'd like to cover today are goal setting for law firms and making sure that you have goals and you avoid some of the common traps associated with those goals. Looking at a couple of easy ways to measure your firm's progress in 2018. Some simple steps to bring your firm up to date if you find yourself lagging. And then we're going to dig into something that I think is really interesting and that's seasonality's impact upon your law firm. Um, most law firms know they have good and bad months but they don't necessarily know in advance which those are. I think we're getting to the point where we actually can start predicting what are good and bad months for your law firm. And I'm gonna dig into what that means and how it will affect your law firm's total finances. And that'll be our last thing where I'll, I'll uh, debut a simple tool that we built specifically for the attendees of this webinar on how to project your 2018 total finances. Uh, and that'll be followed up by a question. So with that, let's jump into the first one, goal setting for law firms. So as part of Clio's research into the legal industry, we conduct uh, extensive surveys as well as data analysis uh, on a variety of different topics. And one thing we did was the 2017 Legal Practitioner Snapshot, where we interviewed over 3,000 lawyers across the United States and a variety of different law firm sizes. And one of the questions we asked was, if I had more time, I would spend it either attending to personal matters, building my law firm's business, or on more billable work. And what was really surprising is almost nobody said they would spend more time on billable work. Uh, they really wanted to spend time either building the business or attending to personal matters. But when you get about halfway through the year, what you're going to find is those billable work um, become the focus of your mid-year check-in because it is a good benchmark with which to weigh all of the different materials that you've been working with. So if you look at common goals for lawyers and steps that they can take to do them, like say increase your billable hours by removing non-billable distractions, you'll find that once you get to June or the end of Q2, it's going to be time to start evaluating how far you've come in meeting those goals. So you should be able to look at these, recognize them as analogous to a goal within your law firm, and figure out if you have the means of tracking them. Now, for most people, it's going to be um, either an increase in billable hours, a decrease in missed deadlines for being more organized, uh, growing your law firm's business will be an increase in the number of matters. And having more work-life balance, while it isn't necessarily indicative, uh, or sorry, indicated via tracking your firm's finances, if you don't see a negative change in your finances while performing this type of work, you actually are in the best place to be. So 
once you've set goals, what you need to be able to do is avoid some traps. And a mid-year check-in is actually the best place to start doing this. First off, you should go back to the beginning of 2018, look at your goal, and make sure that you've taken concrete steps to meet it. If you haven't, there's good news. You still have six months left, so don't panic. But it is a good moment to ask, have I devoted time each month toward meeting this goal or improving how I perform on this goal? The next thing that you should take a look at is, did I choose the wrong goal for 2018? And this is also somewhat controversial because a lot of these things do take time to come to fruition. And it's very common amongst lawyers, especially in solo and small law firms, to try something briefly and then to not see immediate results. And so you get lost then in the day-to-day -day operations of your firm and you don't come back to your goals. So this is a bit of a judgment call. There, there are several metrics by which you can make these calls, whether or not it's actually taking you away from revenue generating activity, whether it's impacting the quality of your legal services on behalf of your clients. But halfway through the year is actually a pretty good time to look at an experiment and figure out, you know what, this might not have the impact that I want, or it may have a negative impact. It's time for me to try something else for the second half of the year. And the other trap to avoid, and this happens all the time, is law firms will focus on multiple goals. It's much better to do small steps towards a longer term goal than it is to take a bunch of goals all at once. So take a look at the last six months and figure out not only are you neglecting a goal, but maybe are you surplanting it with something that you hadn't planned for. And you need to make a choice on which one to stick with for the rest of the year and which one can abide and wait until you get more bandwidth to go ahead and work on that goal. So once you've set goals, it's time to start measuring your firm's progress. And what I'm gonna show you are some simple tools that'll help you keep track of it, not just now, but throughout the entirety of your year. So first of all, you should have set a billable hour target if your firm uses billable hours. And as part of that practitioner snapshot, one of the things Clio helped uncover was really what are the targets that lawyers are setting for themselves. And what we found in firms that are solo and two to five, it's actually really common for you guys to set a target of 1,000 to 1,500 hours. And for larger firms, six to 10, 11 to 25, it's 1,500 to 2,000 hours. Now why the split between those two? I think it's because of the amount of administrative work in the larger firms that's being taken on by non-hourly billable staff. So if you have, for example, uh, a secretary who can just handle your day-to-day -day mail and phone calls, and not, which is not necessarily billable work, then you're gonna give it to her so you can focus on billable work. But in the smaller firms, you don't have that support structure necessarily set up, and that's why your goals are a little lower, to reflect your available time to devote to this. Now, in uh, a Clio presentation we gave in January, we actually took a look at ways that smaller firms can actually remove some of those billable, non-billable distractions and improve your ability to achieve a higher goal. But we're not focusing on that now. What we're gonna take a look at is, did you set a target and how are you in meeting that target? So one of these two numbers, uh, 1,500 or 2,000, should be very familiar to you at this point. Now, one way to track that is by having a billable hour target. And Clio is an example of a tool that allows you to do this. So for example, in the settings in Clio, you can go in and set your default billable rate, your target billing for the year, your number of working days. Here I've used 250. That is actually the uh, number of business days within the year minus <coughs> two weeks for vacation. Um, and then I set the date for when the fiscal year ends. What Clio does is it actually calculates um, how many hours you might need to bill in a day, week, month, and year using those three numbers to come up with your target amount. And it gives you a target to meet each day. And so here I can see that using metrics that I've set, I have 5.9 hours as my daily target. And up to this point in time during this day, I've only billed about four. So maybe I need to take a look at, do I want to spend time on non-billable work today? Or do I want to take time and focus upon billable work? 
and measure my progress accordingly. But because this is a, a mid-year check-in, I don't just want to look at today. I want to look at my performance over time. And so Clio takes all that information and graphs it out for you. And so <coughs> I can take a look at how am I performing against my target goals. So the black line that you see here would be if I were just meeting my target daily. And the blue line is my actual performance. And so we see it varies quite greatly between the two. Uh, sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's a little lower, but it's the insight that this graph gives you that should drive your daily, weekly, and monthly activities. I'm falling behind because maybe I'm doing a little bit more business development. That's not a, that's not a bad thing, but once I meet my goals for business development, I should flip back into billable work and make sure that I'm aligning with those goals as well. And this is just one easy way to check in and see how you're doing. In addition to dashboards, you should also be looking at reports and making sure that your firm is running certain reports on a regular basis. I recommend at least monthly, but also quarterly and right now, the six-month mark, to see how your firm is doing. Uh, and right here is an example of the firm revenue report available in Clio that lays out uh, the different practice areas, the different cases within your firm, and provides totals on how you're doing throughout the year. And so we recommend that users in Clio run this, again, at least on a monthly basis, uh, but are able to quickly and easily generate these figures. Now, this is just a, a quick snapshot of an example firm in the web publishing format. But what I find really interesting about all the reports in Clio is you can actually download them as spreadsheets as well. And that gives you the ability to start playing with those numbers and seeing what's a good fit for your firm um, and being able to dig into them in ways that even Clio doesn't let you do. So if you're going to be using reports like this, make sure it has the flexibility to allow you to build upon it is what I recommend. Now, another really interesting report that uh, firms aren't running often enough is an aging receivables report. So just like the revenue report takes a look at the money that you've taken in and where you are at this point in the year, an aging receivable point looks back and finds the money that you're missing. So bills that you've sent out to clients and have not received payment on. And we know that this is actually a huge pain point for a lot of lawyers out there. They're often waiting uh, 60, 90, 90 plus days on their clients paying the bills. And there are several reasons for this. Uh, the most often cited is the client doesn't have the ability to pay the money all at once. And so you might need to work out a payment plan. But a lot of firms don't necessarily know, except by anecdote, how far behind some of their bills are. So you need to find an aging receivables report within the tool that you're using, run it, and see really who are the people who are falling behind the most and weigh what steps you should be taking to remedy that situation. Maybe it's a direct phone call. Maybe it's working out a payment plan with them. Maybe it's just reissuing the bill and they are forgotten. Or maybe it's finding a better way for them to pay. All of these things could be a part of your mid-year check-in and drive your goals moving forward. Once you've got some insight into where your firm stands, both in terms of performance and revenue, it's time to consider how to catch up. So what's really interesting is most firms don't know how many cases you need in a year to meet your goal. They'll talk about billable hours, uh, but you won't necessarily talk about how many cases. You'll just bring them as they walk in the door. And so Clio, publishes our annual legal trends report. Here's the cover from our most recent uh, late 2017 legal trends report. And one of the things we discovered in this report is that it is possible to calculate an average case value across certain industries. So let's talk about this report. So this is information drawn from 60,000 law firms who contribute certain types of metadata, not client data, to Clio for our analysis. And Clio looks at this data for two reasons. One, it helps us improve our tool, making sure that we're building the best tool possible for you. So it's 60,000 law firms doing quality control. And the second thing is it starts to give us insight on how we can help you guys run a better business in the practice of law. And so looking at some of that data, we were able to come up with the following chart. And that is, what is the average case value 
per case by practice area. So for example, if you are doing civil litigation and you're using billable hours, we found that the average case value is about $4,500. It's not a lot of money. In fact, if you look at most of these numbers, they were shockingly low. There are a couple of reasons for this. One, this is bulk aggregate data. And so we don't have any means of controlling what data is put in. It's lawyers tracking this information on behalf of their law firms. And so we can't dive into an individual bill and say, oh, this one's a settlement that happened early in the process versus this one is a case that went all the way to trial, and so it's bigger. So what we provided instead are these p-values, the ability to take a look at where the cases fall kind of in a curve. And so the mean is the average value, and I think that's a handy number for calculating. Um, but p90 is kind of the value that is used by the top 10%. Right? So if you're a top performing firm, um, you doing some litigation, while the average firm might be making 4,500 per case, you're making 9,000 per case. And looking at your own firm's finances, you can kind of see where you fall on. But let's use the mean. If I'm a civil litigation firm and I'm not meeting my targets in terms of either billable hours or financial metrics, how many new cases am I going to need to kit over the the, the barrier in my financial goals. I can look at this chart, take the 4,500, and start calculating that out. So it may be that I need to find 10 more cases throughout the year to meet my goal. And now I can actually set that target and work my way towards it. So that's a business development goal using these numbers. Another goal that you could be setting is voiding lockup days. Now, this is a chart from PricewaterhouseCoopers Law Firm Survey of 2017. Um, it takes a look at various law firms throughout the UK, but one of the things that they track that you don't see elsewhere is this concept of lockup days. Lockup days are work that is in progress on behalf of clients, and then debtor days, once you've issued the bill and are waiting for them to pay. And one of the things that they found was very interesting is that it can be easily 150 days for a law firm to fill an hour and then get paid. So that's almost, what, four months of time. Can you afford <laughs> to go without a paycheck for four months? No. So you want to avoid lockup days, and there are a couple of ways to do that. The first is accept credit cards. Now, I know this is somewhat controversial. A lot of lawyers aren't really interested in adding credit cards to their law firm. But again, Clio's Legal Trends Report has found something really interesting. Amongst the firms in using Clio that were accepting credit cards, they were on average getting paid 40% faster. That means they had less cash flow dilemmas, less lockup days, um, and were more likely to get paid. They had less aging receivables lingering around. And so we actually just went ahead and built law pay credit card processing into Clio Boutique and Elite uh, with no extra fees to our users because we wanted to make sure we were giving them their best chance of being a successful law firm. So if you accept credit cards, your cash flow dilemmas are reduced and that will help you catch back up. The other thing that you should be doing to uh, catch up is to use trust accounts to improve realization. Now, realization is really just tracking um, if I bill an hour, did I record that hour? If I recorded that hour, did I send that hour onto the client on a bill or did I discount it? And once I've given that bill to a client, do I get to collect money on it? And what's interesting is um, we again found in the legal trust trends report that firms that have a trust account and actually take advance fee deposits into that trust account actually have a better billing rate. So they have an 18% higher realization rate. That's almost a 20% increase in uh, hours that you track and send on to the client and a 15% higher uh, revenue. So they're able to collect more money because they're using the trust account. You're shifting the risk from uh, holding a debt on behalf of your client to actually holding advanced payment on behalf of your client. And that's why you should be using trust accounts to improve your performance from now through the end of the year. 
if you're not doing these two things, you're actually, they're actually falling behind in your goals, and that can be demonstrated. That can be demonstrated in a really interesting segment that we're debuting here, which is seasonality's impact on law firm metrics. We know that law firms have both good and bad months, but what's interesting is how easily we're starting to document that and what steps you might be able to take to smooth that out. So you should know in advance that the average law firm has built less than half of their annual revenue by the end of June. So six months into the year, you're not even up to 50% of revenue. The average law firm actually comes in between 45 and 46% of their annual revenue. And that means that the rest of the year, you guys are scrambling to catch up and come up with revenue to meet your needs and your targets. And this chart somewhat lays this out. So the orange line is how most law firms tend to think about their law firm billing. I start the year with zero, and at the very upper right, 100% of my billing is done. Okay? But the green and yellow line actually tell a different story, and those tell that we have good months and bad months, and I'd like to break those out. So let's take a look at the green line. What it does is it takes a look at the percentage of annual revenue billed on a monthly basis. So if I'm looking at the green line and we're using the axis on the right here, um, so the 0 to 12%, I see that in January and February, I'm only billing about 6% of my annual revenue per month rather than 8 to 10%, which is what you should be expecting. Then I have a really good month in March, then it drops in April, then a good month in May, then it drops in June, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what's really interesting is December is usually the biggest change outside of March for law firms. You guys are scrambling to pack in work in December and get your bills done. Um, and the yellow line shows this, this percentage change amongst all of the months, um, how rapidly a month increases over the previous month and how rapidly it falls, like say from March to April. Uh, and you're going to have panic months if you don't know that this is typical, normal, and what to expect. So there are two things you should take away from this chart. One, um, most law firms have bad months, and it's almost always every other month in our evidence. Uh, but two, you can actually plan around these light versus heavy months. So if I know that I'm going to have a lot of billable work in March, I can maybe push off some of my business development goals until April and use April to set up a successful May. And I can segment my year accordingly. I can also tell that August and September tend to be, um, I'm sorry, August and September tend to be lower months in terms of billable hours. So maybe that's the time to schedule my vacations. So I can use this to plan both a better work-life balance as well as business development. But without this evidence, I'm a little lost. So here I just pulled out the uh, average percent of revenue bill by month, so you can see it a little bit more detail. And this chart actually shows it broken down by about 16 different practice areas. I'm not expecting you to read this whole chart, uh, but you can see that there are some that are actually dramatically different from other areas of law. And I wanted to highlight that so I can give uh, you a chance to see how you can start using this information a little bit more targeted to you. Let's look at three practice areas. Green is insurance, so insurance defense. Blue is personal injury. And yellow is tax. If we look at tax, their first half of the year is spectacular, right? They, they start small in January, but they're billing well over 10% of their annual revenue per month all the way up until May. And after that, it just drops dramatically. And they're not going to have a good month again until October. Um, and interestingly, November and December are bad months for them, which is the opposite of the average law firm. So if I'm a tax firm, I need to be planning both my expenses as well as my personnel and their associated expenses around this yellow line chart. So I know that I'm not going to need people um, throughout June, July, and August, and September, but I might need to ramp operations back up again in October. If I'm a personal injury firm, which is blue, I know that my year is going to start off really poorly, but it's going to grow consistently, except for October and September, and I'm going to have a great month in December. With insurance, it's actually incredibly varied. They're all over the map. And so, again, planning that accordingly 
they need to know how to staff and what revenues they're going to be able to count on. So different practice areas have different good months. And this chart shows that and is something that you can use in the Legal Trends Report to help plan your year. So how can you use this information to project your law firm's 2018 total finances? Well, I built a tool for you, and it's a really simple tool. Um, you're going to receive a link to this as part of the follow-up email, but all you do is you click that link, you come here, and you provide two bits of data. One, your revenue to date, and if you're using a tool like Clio and run the revenue report, you can actually pull that information really quickly. And the second is you're going to pick your practice area. And we have 16 of the most commonly used practice areas in Clio as part of this report. So if you don't see your practice area, that's okay. Pick one that is closest. And what, that's, uh, what this report is going to tell you is what the average law firm has billed out of their total billing by this point. So for example, we see the administrative law firm has billed as close to 50% um, as possible, 49% of their annual bill. And that means if they've billed 125,000, the light blue uh, box to date, they can expect to probably get about 260,000 in billing by the end of the year. Now again, this is projection. It's just help you set goals and your firm may differ, but it's really interesting to see how dramatically some of these firm, uh, practice areas change what a firm can expect in the year. So let's jump to the examples that we did just a moment ago. Um, this is tax. So remember, tax is really strong in the beginning of the year. Seasonality greatly affects their income. So if you're a tax firm and you've billed about 125,000 to date, um, because you have billed greater than 50% of your annual revenue, on average, you can only really expect to get about uh, 250,000. You're at 50%, you're gonna double, you're not gonna go much higher. And that's if you have a good October. But if you're a personal injury law firm, take a look at the difference. 125,000 now can be 270,000 by the end of the year because you're gonna have consistently better months from here on out. And knowing this information, you can actually plan what you're doing right now and what you should be doing throughout the rest of the year. This is why it's important to have a mid-year check-in, but also to take a look at how the industry is performing as a whole and at Clio, we're really glad to be able to provide that information to you such that you can make these informed decisions. 